Each man is only responsible for his own actions. The reason that this is something that is hard for people on the left to comprehend is because Bernie Sanders is a collectivist, like a lot of people on the left are. It comes from the, spe the whole speech is violence mentality. The reason that they believe that is they, they believe that people don't really have autonomy, that we all operate as a group, that we're a collective. And because of that, if you have bad leaders, like in their mind, President Trump, that are telling people to do things that are not good, whether it's called a violence or not, that person who is the leader is responsible. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Now you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> and for today's daily dose of stupid, uh, there was a lot of stupid going on, so it was hard to narrow it down. But I think the stupidest thing that happened the other day, you got to give that to Bernie Sanders. Uh, this is a tweet that was issued by him the other day. You can see here. The man directly responsible for the chaos of today is Donald Trump, who has made it clear that he will do anything to remain in power, including insurrection and inciting violence. Trump will go down in history as the worst and most dangerous president in history. A little repetitive there with the use of the word history, Bernie, but you know, you made your point. Now this is stupid, but Bernie is not the only person doing this. I mean, you could, just about all of the blue check marks yesterday of people on the left we're doing this routine. The media did it over and over again. I saw a lot of people that are just friends of mine on social media doing this, that, that were on the left that, well, because people that support Trump were doing this, then it's Trump's fault that this is taking place. They, they were doing this left and right. So the question is, why did I pick Bernie Sanders? Why, out of all the people that I could have used as an example, did I specifically select Bernie Sanders as the stupidest person that could have said this? Because for everyone else saying it, it's just stupid. We talked about this at the top of the show. Those, you remember those four things that I talked about that we all need to agree on? The fourth one was, you cannot excuse or ignore violence on your side and decry it on the other. So somebody on the left, like Bernie Sanders, um, you know, blame, and, and number two, blaming somebody else for the evil that another person does. So he's breaking two of those four things that we were talking about there. I mean, that's dumb, because it's been a hallmark of Western civilization for a long time that you only blame people for the bad that they do. That's how this works. You blame a person for bad things that they do, but you don't blame that person for bad things another person does. So that would be stupid no matter who it is. The reason it is so incredibly stupid for Bernie Sanders, of all people, to say it is because Bernie Sanders once had a campaign worker, so not just a supporter or somebody that voted for Bernie Sanders, a person that literally worked on Bernie Sanders' campaign. You may recall, because I covered this story myself on News Radio 1440, and I had then-Senator Luther Strange, this is before Doug Jones was installed, come on the show and talk about his experience and in, in being you know, in D.C. when this happened. You had a Bernie Sanders supporter go out and try to murder about a tenth of Congress, all Republicans. Somebody that went up to somebody said, hey, are those Democrats or Republicans practicing on that softball field? And he said, those are Republicans. And so what that person did was went and got his gun and tried to kill as many of them as humanly possible. Shot three of them and nearly killed Ske Steve Scalise, who was the majority whip at the time. And actually, Mo Brooks... Um, you know, was kind of the hero of that story, our own Mo Brooks from District 5 of Alabama. So you may recall that story. And do you remember what my reaction and the reaction of literally every other conservative I heard that day of any notoriety or, you know, prominence? You remember what every single one of them said? Yeah, this is terrible, but it's not Bernie Sanders' fault. And it wasn't. You can only blame people for their bad actions. You can't blame from the, for the bad actions of other people. And this is the way that we need to operate. We need to be able to hold on to this moral principle. That Bernie Sanders, if he is going to hold this standard of, 
Well, Trump says things that are inflammatory, and that because of that, as Bernie Sanders said in his tweet, that this is the person that is responsible for it. I mean, you can uh, look at the tweet again. You can see here that Bernie Sanders specifically says that he is directly responsible for the chaos and says that he, uh, you know, has been involved in insurrection and inciting violence. So, I mean, it doesn't get a lot, it doesn't really get more clear cut than that. He's laying the blame there at Donald Trump's feet, but it's specifically dumb for Bernie Sanders to do that because he's had his supporters before engage in violence against other people, and he took no blame for it. And by the way, he shouldn't. I don't blame Bernie Sanders for that. I'd never blame Bernie Sanders for that. I didn't do that when it happened. But you also can't turn around and then blame Donald Trump for this if you're not going to blame Bernie Sanders for that. They are both cases of a politician's ardent supporters engaging in domestic terrorism and using the target of that as, as things that they don't like. In Bernie Sanders' case, it was the Republicans. In Donald Trump's case, it was the certification of the Electoral College. Those were the targets, and these were people that supported them. And I've heard several people try to justify the, the or try to justify this or try to make the case that this is different. That what happened with Bernie Sanders, that can't be laid at Bernie Sanders' feet, but this can absolutely be laid at Donald Trump's feet. I've yet to hear a good argument for it, but the most common one that I've heard is, well, yeah, but Trump's rhetoric was so over the top. Did he call for violence? Well, no, but, well, I'm sorry. But you don't understand. Trump's rhetoric was so inflammatory, and he was saying that the election was stolen, and he made these people feel like they didn't have uh, any other way to express themselves. Okay, still not Donald Trump's fault. And if we're going to play that game, also remember that Bernie Sanders routinely, I mean, pretty much on a daily basis on Twitter, and I know because I follow him on Twitter and I see him, you know, as much as anybody. He and AOC are like always at the top of my Twitter feed. Uh, Bernie Sanders routinely says that the Republicans are killing people because of their stances on things like global warming and the 1%. And when he says that we are the only industrialized country that does not have universal health care, he usually does so. And in conjunction with that, blames Republicans for people dying because they can't get health care. He does this all the time. Now, that's disgusting, and it's wrong, but it's still not a call to violence. It's not right that Bernie Sanders says that people have blood on their hands because they do not have universal health care, Medicare for all, or whatever new catchy phrase he has rebranded as this week. But the point is, Bernie Sanders engages in inflammatory rhetoric all the time, which shouldn't be surprising. He's a socialist revolutionary and always has been. He doesn't shy away from that. The point is, you cannot hold... Donald Trump to this standard if you're not willing to hold Bernie Sanders to the same standard. And if Bernie Sanders is going to lay the blame directly at Donald Trump's feet, then he has to take responsibility for the crazy actions of people that support him as well, and he does not want to make that bargain. But ultimately, the only person that we can blame is the person that actually took the bad action because speech isn't violence. It's one of the maxims of the show. This is an idea that has been around since the Law of Moses. It goes all the way back to the Torah. Each man is only responsible for his own sins. It's been a staple of Western civilization. Always has been. This is part of common law, that you cannot try an individual for crimes that another person committed. Each man is only responsible for his own actions. The reason that this is something that is hard for people on the left to comprehend is because Bernie Sanders is a collectivist, like a lot of people on the left are. It comes from the, spe the whole speech is violence mentality. The reason that they believe that is they, they believe that people don't really have autonomy, that we all operate as a group, that we're a collective. And because of that, if you have bad leaders, like in their mind, President Trump, that are telling people to do things that are not good, whether it's called to violence or not, that person who is the leader is responsible, and people like, Hotley and Cruz, who I believe it was Senator Tim Coons, has actually called for them to resign because they oppose the election process. They, they oppose the Electoral College certification. They really do think of this as people that don't have autonomy just following their leaders because they're incapable of making decisions themselves. They see humanity as cattle. They see them as just cogs in the machine that have no control over their own decisions. And because of that, the people that represent them, those are responsible for their actions. 
in the same way that they see themselves as the benevolent shepherds that are going to take care of us. That's how the left views human beings. This is consistent with that. That's why they feel that it's appropriate to blame other people for things that their supporters do. It really does all go back to collectivism because they do not see people as individuals with their own autonomy. And that really kind of brings me to the point that I've been trying to make the entire show, which is we have to be better than this. People on the right, people that purport to be conservatives, have to be better than this. You know that scene in The Dark Knight Rises? Or no, sorry, The Dark Knight, not The Dark Knight Rises. Where um, they're, you know, Batman has been pushed to his limit. And the Joker is trying to get him to kill somebody because he's trying to put him in a situation where he has to kill, he has to break his one rule. And the Joker actually tries to get Batman to kill him. That's what the left has been doing. And yesterday, the right gave in. Because you may remember at the, the Batman Begins, the first movie in that trilogy, that Ra's al Ghul tries to get Batman to kill someone. And he said, compassion is not a sentiment your enemy is going to share. And Bruce Wayne says, that's what makes it so important. It makes me different than them. You cannot become that which you are fighting. Because if you are, then the fight is pointless. If you become the dragon that you're trying to slay, then what good is that? Now they just have to deal with another dragon. And that's what Batman understood. The difference is, Batman, he ended that fight by taking the Joker in, but not killing him. He didn't give in to the rule. He, he didn't break his own rule. He didn't take the Joker's life because it was important to him to have something that differentiated him from the psychopaths that he fought. Something that keeps him from becoming that. The reason that I'm so scared today and the reason that I am really bothered by what I saw is I am genuinely terrified that the right is starting to become the left. Like the Joker, the left has been poking and prodding and shoving and trying everything that they can do to get the right to react in kind, to do things the way that the left does. So far, they've been completely unsuccessful. And this goes all the way back to, you know, 2012, 2015, when different acts of violence on the political left have happened. And so far, the right has been really good about not doing that. Yesterday, they weren't. Yesterday, they looked just like a bunch of Antifa or BLM thugs. Their actions were the same. And they acted the same. Punching police officers, breaking down doors. That's what they do. If we're not really, really careful, it will be really easy for us to devolve into the very thing that we're trying to defeat. <laughs> People ask me all the time, Caleb, how do you stay in such great shape? Well, let me tell you, it's not easy. The Secret is a steady diet consisting mostly of likes and subscriptions, especially the ones where the person hits the notification bell. That's what actually gives me my superhuman strength. Likes, as it turns out, are very high in protein and iron. Sadly, doesn't do anything for your hair.